I've had cases, many cases, where not only did the complaining witness do what you said, which is try to call the police and the prosecution and say, hey, look, this was an argument that got out of control. Yes, I called the police. I shouldn't have, that was a mistake. I don't want the case to go forward. I want my husband or my boyfriend to be able to return home. I don't want a no contact order, um, you know, can, and I want to drop the charges. I've had judges and, and prosecutors in fact, more often than not, with the victim sitting in front of them in a courthouse, refuse to amend that bond order. Well, how are you supposed to talk something like this out? How are you supposed to sort of maybe get to the point where you are moving forward in a relationship without the ability to talk to that person? So that's the first hurdle in resolving a case like this. Again, everyone is afraid prosecutors police and then ultimately judges are all afraid of this being the case that if they let it go without a fight it's going to spiral and become something far more serious so what happens like you said the complaining witness tells the prosecutor look i i want the case dismissed i don't want the case to go forward the prosecutor will say okay um but i don't need you Again, what people have to understand is, is in a civil case, Erica, if you were to sue me, it's Erica versus Mark, and we're both parties. If you were to call the police on me for domestic violence, Erica is not a party. You are just a a, uh, a witness for the party that, that charges the case, which is the people of the state of Michigan. The prosecution is the party. You are not. Um, so they're going to start to look at, is there a way to prove the case without Erica's cooperation? Um, and if there is, the case will absolutely proceed forward. And, and it is not unheard of. In fact, it's very, very common to go to trial on domestic violence cases where the victim is not a, a witness for the prosecution. In fact, will frequently be a witness for the for the defense. That puts the victim, uh, the complaining witness, in a very difficult position because the prosecutor is going to threaten them. They're going to say, did you did you make a false police report? Because if you get on the witness stand and say, Mark didn't do anything, um, then they will threaten you with, with charges of, of perjury or filing a false police report, obstruction of justice. They'll put a lot of pressure on those on those complaining witnesses to, to not let this go, to, to do the right thing. There are victims advocates in these prosecutors office that that work with victims to try to tell them that, look, 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 you have to understand the circle of violence. Maybe you forgive them now, but they're going to be back tomorrow and they're going to they're going to they're going to assault you again. You, you, you got to go through with this case. But let's assume despite all of these protections and safeguards against the victim wanting to, to give up the case, the victim still refuses to testify and refuses to go forward and wants the case dismissed. The first thing the police are going to do is say, okay, what is it on the 911 tape? Does the 911 tape simply say, police, please come to my house. There's, uh, you know, there's a been a domestic violence. That's probably not helpful enough for the police to prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt. But is, is there an extended 911 call like, my husband's beating me right now, um, you know, with crying and screaming and, you know, because those 911 calls will be admitted by the prosecution without the victim's testimony to show the jury or a judge what happened on that evening. They're going to be testimony from the police officers when you got to the uh, when you got to the house. Were there any injuries? Um, you know, so if we have a 911 call call that says my husband just hit me and the woman has a black eye or a swollen lip or a broken nose then you know then then that is going to be evidence that they will rely upon uh independent witnesses so was your 16 year old son home did he see what happened did the next door neighbor sort of see it spill into the front lawn was is that person going to be available to testify if there's independent witnesses of the assault the police will frequently and the prosecution will frequently go that route and finally and this is the thing that i think most people really struggle with because it it just doesn't sound right but it's the law there is an exception to the hearsay uh, rule um that says Things that are said when you are in an excited, an excited, agitated state, like, you know, the police pull up and, and a woman is on her 
front uh, porch crying and screaming, my husband just hit me in the face. That is hearsay. A police officer can't testify that Erica told us that when we got to Erica's home. Except in this case, they can because your statement is considered to be what's called the law calls an excited utterance. And that will frequently be used as the evidence to the case against you. So the prosecution with the police are going to try to see if they can construct a case against the defendant that does not require the the complaining witnesses cooperation. And if they can, the case will go forward not only without the, the complaining witnesses cooperation, but actually without the complaining witnesses approval.